minimum wise? Like, where they say, uh, you know, if it's five tiles. You no, it just takes one tile. It just takes one tile, brother. Just one. If, if they, if they, one tile. Just one tile. If they tell you to go. Just one. If they tell you you can buy from a boneyard, tell them to go buy it. Yeah, you cannot. <laughs> Listen, brother. One, one, one broken tile. One broken tile buys you the whole roof. And this continues only one reason. There's multiple reasons how to get there. Remember the five reasons for the siding? That's how you approach it. You bury them with it. Say it's not discontinued, and they're saying one tile. Okay, how many tiles is it really going to take to take off the one tile? Well, it's not just one tile; it's one tile, and it's maintenance related. Yeah, so it's not even hurricane related. Oh, so so you have one one broken tile. The, the tile's not. Well, you have to have a cause of loss, dude. That's that's one hundred and one. You have to have okay, a cause so let's of say loss. Irma. I, I want to say hurricane Irma. But you said it was just maintenance. Why did you say it was just maintenance? I'm saying that's what the insurance company. Oh, that's what they're saying. Okay. Yeah, it's it's foot traffic. It's well, so then they didn't approve the tile. Right, I'm saying so. That's different. That's totally different. What you just said are totally two different scenarios. One is where they said they gave you one tile or a couple tiles. No, I'm saying from the Another, they're saying there is no damage. Two totally different situations. Let me explain better. I'm, a customer called me to do an inspection on the roof. That's mm -hmm. how it always starts for me. I get up on the roof, I'm finding broken tiles. Mm -hmm. the, the roof, uh, the tile's not made anymore. Mm -hmm. So we file a claim. The insurance company says it's foot traffic or mm -hmm. it's maintenance or it wasn't installed properly. So I'm Mechanical saying it, it doesn't meet the 25% minimum requirement for the Florida. You're not law. even in the conversation for 25%. Bro. Right. That's what I'm saying. You're not even, you're way the ahead of yourself. not made anymore. Like it's thinking bad. about that or anything, like you're, you're, the door is not even open. The door is shut hard in your face right now because they didn't even give you one tile. Right. You got to get like, but if they give you one tile, that's coverage, baby. You see what I mean? So you're not, you're, 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 it's pointless, to but it's pointless to be talking about building codes, which is 25% when you don't even have coverage yet. You see what I mean? You have to first get the coverage. So if there's multiple broken tiles, what are they saying that it is maintenance? Yeah, so, you, so you've got to give them documentation as to how it could have happened otherwise. You've got to do that. So you've got to take hundreds of photos. You might have to, did they use an engineer to turn this down or just an adjuster? Yeah, often. Did they, or in this situation I'm talking, you're talking about here? Mm -hmm. Was it an engineer mm -hmm. that shut it down or an inside desk? Okay. So if it's, a, if it's an adjuster that shuts it down, you want to get a re-inspect and get another adjuster to look at it, right? You do that with a photo report. But if they send out an engineer to shut it down, you're literally probably going to need an engineer of your own right. to overturn it, which means you're going to have to go hire an engineer. Now, the engineers they're using are shitty. I don't know how else to put it, right? They use these copy and pasted, reports, yeah. yeah, like templated reports. They all, they all say the same thing. It's due to maintenance, due to cosmetic, due to negligence, and all this other stuff. What they all feel to realize, though, is like, so, and you also need to do weather data research. If it was, even if it was Irma, you have to search and see where the, what were the wind speeds in that area and that neighborhood specifically. I, I, I actually like the engineer report sometimes because sometimes they give you a reason <laughs> to stand on to get it bought. So, for instance, sometimes they'll say, it's been neglected, it hasn't been properly maintained, it's falling apart, it has all these problems right. to it. Okay, then, great. I'm glad you established all that. How high does the wind speed have to be to, ter to tear one of those tiles off then? Since it's sitting there in ter terrible shape already, obviously should have been replaced years ago, right? Not even maintained. I don't give a flying, you know what? I don't care. Because if the wind damages one of those tiles, I mean, it, then it just it doesn't take the full wind speed now. It only takes smaller wind speed because it was in horrible shape. My point is, 
the condition that it was in at the time of the storm means nothing in, as it relates to them turning down the claim. That means nothing. And you could have a modified bitumen roof. I've literally seen where, the, where there's duct tape patching it together and multiple layers like bleeding through the top, like because the top layer was no longer, it was like disintegrating. Yeah. But if there's hail on any one of those layers, it's bought, it's done, Dundee. That makes sense? You, I mean, it, you don't need to solve the whole thing. Like you just need so a really little bit of things. hire an engineer to get it, those cases. It really is. I mean, I, I would try, I've gotten them turned around myself with proper documentation, depending on how bad that engineer report is. Like if I get an engineer, if they get an engineer that comes out there and says, look, it was, it, it was in, it's never been maintained. You know what I mean? To the engineer inspections? Absolutely, yeah. Time, yeah. Absolutely, every single time, definitely. I wouldn't miss one of those. So I've got some of them on my YouTube videos, if you want to see. And I got one of them on the YouTube video where he gets up and, he, and the engineer is trying to talk policy and coverage to me. He's talking about uh, uh, cosmetic damage to this, these dormers. And he's like, well, you know, it's cosmetic. And I go, well, you know, hold on. That's not, you know, and this is the thing, if they start talking policy and coverage to you, I'll physically back up from them. I'll be like, I'll be like, whoa, I'm sorry. I, it sounds to me like you're talking about policy coverage. I can't talk to you about that. You know what I mean? That's why I told this. Engineers aren't allowed to talk about it either. They're not allowed to talk about it either. So he was clearly out of bounds, right? And I go, whoa, I'm sorry. It sounds to me like you're talking about policy. I'm not allowed to talk. He goes, oh, yeah, me neither. But then he carried on to talk about it. And I go, well, I mean, you're saying the cosmetic and this and that. But to me, you know, it's, uh, it's functional damage, which is also kind of policy lingo, right? But what does that mean, functional damage? So they're saying it's cosmetic, it's mechanic, you know, or cosmetic, right? It's cosmetic. So like they're saying, or um, the marring exclusion. You've seen the marring exclusion? You've seen that? Mar is marring on metal or whatever. So they're saying like, if the, if the metal has marring in it, it won't, it, it's not going to hurt anything, right? Unless it's functional damage, unless it affects the functionality of it, okay? Which it always does, if you think about that. If it's got a ding in the metal, it's going to rust, and it's going to leak water into it, thus affecting the functionality, dude. You know what I mean? So you, you just have to get down in the trenches with them. This is my this hard way of answering it, you know, but you got to go through the motions. you got to put in the work. You got to go prove every every last part of their stuff wrong. So I, I, I would, you know, if they said that it's really really bad, then a simple little weather data research, you know, if if the 40 50 mile an hour wind is all it's going to take to knock the tile off if it's hanging by a thread, how bad does that have to be? You see what I mean? So if they give me something that'll make it easy for me to turn around on my own, great. I'm going to try it anyway on my own, just because I don't want to pay an engineer and have to be beholden to an engineer and wait for them to do everything, you know. Um, and they take forever, and most of them are in the pocket of the insurance companies, and they're hard to find in the first place, you know. It's, it's not as easy as it seems. It's difficult. It's an uphill climb. But the, the only way to they're usually get them over, them right even if you had to hire a PA or an attorney, I believe that PA or attorney is going to have to get it a freaking engineer. Yeah. They're going to have to get the expert advice to counter it, you know? So I just one, think... One, one exclusion to that. If, if the insurance company's engineer says something is definitive that occurred before they inspected, you can basically throw out their report because they have no scientific way of proving what they're saying. Sure, sure. Wait, say that one more time. I'm sorry. It, well, let's say an engineer says that uh, it, it, it was... It, 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 pre-existing damage. Oh, pre-existing. Yeah, and and they inspected only after the fact. Mm. So they I, weren't there. Yeah, right. when they're definitively saying that it was pre-existing or that it was definitely mm -hmm. wear and tear before the event. They just shot they themselves in the foot. The yeah. Event, you know, you can respect an engineer when they say, uh, it, it's my professional opinion. Mm -hmm. it's like sure, when sure. They say something definitively, and they weren't there or have any proof of before the fact. Yeah, it's clear bias. Yeah, yeah. Let's see but, carbon dated shit. Yeah, so so like you're, they've disqualified themselves essentially, right? Yeah. But keep in mind, say so you go through all the trouble and all the time that it takes, and all the work, and all the people you have to call, and all the arguing you have to do to get that engineer report thrown out. The very next thing the carrier does. It sends out another engineer who does it right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's 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 just be prepared to work it. You know what I mean? And go the distance. Be prepared to outlast them. You know, 
But sometimes, you know, I, I, I would, if I'm you, a contractor, then I believe everybody should qualify to do business with me, right? And I'm not just going to take every job, you know? So do I really want this damn job? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if it's got all these, uh, you know, challenges to it and stuff, I don't have to take it. If I take it, I'm doing it for a reason. You know, I want to build my brand and build well, up my like referral base. The adjusters base. and the engineers, they would just won't talk to you. Like they, they, they're just, they ignore you. Like this, so, uh, we had an adjuster say that the carrier told them to not lift up on tiles when they're doing an inspection. Like don't check for uplift. So that, how, how do you respond to that kind of stuff? And engineers, like every engineer meeting we go to, basically they just blow us off. They don't want, they don't want to deal with us at all. Sometimes they don't even want you to get up, up there with them. Yeah, right, right, yeah I've right. gone through that they for they sure. Talk to us. Yeah, I, I actually don't, you know, so an engineer meeting, the thing I would like to do if I can is I want to establish, I want to point out first all the stuff that's not weather related. Because if you think about what they're doing, they're going in there taking pictures of the mechanical stuff and the cosmetic and all the stuff that they say is maintenance related, right? And they take photos of all those and put those in the report, but then they conveniently leave out the weather damage stuff. You know what I mean? And so my deal is, that's all great, you know, that you found all that wonderful stuff. I'd like to be the one to find it first. That's why I take video of them. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally, man. Take video of the engineer? Sure. Oh, no shit. Yeah, because why not? he goes to isolated locations that he wants to and not to them yeah. that are actually affected. Like, and I like to go ahead and have, have, <laughs> have chalk lines already drawn in circles and to where he, it makes it almost impossible for him to not document it. You know what I mean? And, and, and to kind of see where it's going, let it come to you. Don't, and don't make any first moves. Just let the game come to you. Show up. Hey, I'm not trying to be in your way. Just, you know, that kind of thing. Letter. Right. But, yeah, but, but chances are they're going to be. Expect them to be standoffish with you, right? But a, a lot of times I find that they will have conversation with me. If they're even willing to have conversation with me, then I want to let them know, hey, just so you know, I found a whole bunch of non-weather related damage. Mm -hmm. Look what I found. I found cosmetic, I found mechanical, I found all of this. And you can see the difference. It's so much very, very, very different than the hail damage. <laughs> Look at the hail damage, how different it is. You know what I mean? And I've already documented it and I've already taken three to 400 pictures. Like I want them to get the idea that it's your not report's good. not gonna be the only report going in. You know what I mean? So if you don't want to look stupid as a licensed, regulated, certified engineer to a lowly little contractor consultant, at least do your freaking job. You know what I mean? Because this is not going away. You know. So just so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna send in a report. Like, and, and if it doesn't go well, or they're not agreeing with you, or they're saying, "Son, that's not." Yeah. I had an engineer tell me that this is clear hail damage. But you don't need to replace the roof over it. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what? I know, like, dude, what? Like, are you serious? Like, did you really just say that? You know, an older guy too, with all this experience, Hey, certified, and all that nonsense. That's all bogus to me. It doesn't mean anything to me. You know, I, I could care less about their credentials or any of that nonsense. If they work for JSL, or if they work for, you know, one of the big. I mean, I just that to me, I just they're just as bad as the rest of them. You know. But I've seen a lot of them overturn. It just takes time. I just hate it when they send the engineer. It just takes time. But I'll tell you, there's another thing. They always focus on the date of loss, right, that you give to them. Do not give them a date of loss. Give them date of discovery or proximate discovery, right? Don't give them a date of loss and do not give them a cause of loss. So, like, if it's wind and or hail, I don't know. That's up to you guys to figure out. It's not up to the client to figure out what caused the damage. That's up to the adjuster to come out and perform an inspection and investigation to determine the cause of loss. And also, quite frankly, to determine the time of loss. They can do that inspection and that investigation and figure all that out. So what I find is if people just guess and give them a date, then they're locking you in on that date. And if it goes to an engineer, the engineer, all the engineer has to do is prove that there was no hail damage on the date that you gave to them. Once they've done that, it's done. It's denied.
Yeah, well, I always use Her Irma because I'm doing a hurricane. So it's, it's all, I'm always guiding them to Irma in September 10, 2007. Okay, but sooner or later, the Hurricane Irma damage is going to be over with, and we're going to be on to bigger and better things. <laughs> <laughs> but not hail. <laughs> well, it's going to be other things. You get hail, too. You will get some of that. Um, but, my, you know, my, 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 my bigger point here is that you're, they'll try to latch on technicalities to shut it down. Dates of loss, you know, information given to them. They're always so to catch us on it's it's like, better to be yeah. vague, okay? Um, now another thing, I had a deal the other day where it was a, it was a deal that had progressed all the way through an engineer, and the engineer denied it, okay? And it was based on a certain cause of loss uh, and, and date of loss, and they gave to them like it was a church that filed the claim with the agent, and the agent just gave him answers that he just came, he just made them up himself. He said, well, I think it's when, and he just came up with it on his own. Well, that stuck, and that caused it to be denied, right? And so we literally have to go back and, you know, counter the engineer report and, and go hire an engineer and untangle that. Or, 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 we simply just change up the playing field, okay? Which means that that was denied, under hay, under wind or whatever, so the client simply filed a brand new claim with date of discovery, not date of loss, and don't know what the cause of loss is, hail and or wind. And guess what happens when you file a brand new claim? They send out a brand new adjuster. Isn't that happens? Isn't that what happens when your clients file brand new claims? Sure. Every time, right? right? They send out a new adjuster who doesn't know crap about what's going on, and they start from scratch, right? Whenever an adjuster comes out to your job site, it starts from scratch, right? Yeah, unless you're so opening I'm, a claim or something. So what I'm talking about is that claim is closed. We lost. Let's go and open a new claim. The new... <laughs> yes, so starts so. over from scratch, man. Yeah, yeah. If there was ever a way we could start this puppy over from scratch, We'd sure do it, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, guess what? We can. It's playing the same game they're playing, basically. And we're reverse. It is a game, ultimately. Life. Yeah. But it's a game I love. Yeah, it's fun. I love this game, man. I just, I, <laughs> I just, I don't know if you can tell, man, but I love it, you know. Where I hated it, where I was bogged down in the, dealing with the, the, the clients and the homeowners and, you know, producing. But now I just, I, I'm a little bit more out of there. I don't deal with the client as much, you know? And, uh, and I just, I don't have to do the pr production. It's just all about the inspections, estimates, supplements. That's my game. That's the IES certified, I, IES inspections, estimates, supplements, right? It's just, it's a thrilling life, man. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, you come from any wall, you know, background, you don't have to be a college graduate. It depends on how much you want to put into it. You know what I mean? Like anybody can come from anywhere and win in this game. I, I, I used to love it too until they started sending out people who were saying, oh, I'm just a glorified photographer. The ladder assist and all this other nonsense. <laughs> right. Yeah, it gets worse and worse, but I just don't go there with them, man. I, I think the, the value, the key in everything is, is in the simplicity. It's in the simplicity. I think when we try to get it over complicated, and we try to one up them with a fancier method, you know. Then we then they beat us. They keep they keep one up in us. They're, we're never gonna outlast and outrun the insurance companies, man. They could shut this shit down tomorrow. You know what I mean? In house attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the, it's not even close as compared to like what we can do compared to what they can do. You know. It's industry in the world. But but nobody's gonna spend the time. Nobody on the carrier side is going to spend as much time in each one of these files as I will. Nobody will. No attorney, no, no building consultant. Think about that now. You know I'm telling the truth. Nobody's willing to put in as much time as I'm willing to put in on one file. That's my advantage. That's my advantage. So I think a lot of times adjusters too, they, they see things in terms of litigation. If it ends up in litigation, how's this going to go, you know? And I think if you look at my process, I get out in front of everything. Everything's documented. Like, there's no fluff here. There's no fudge. It's all legit. There's no frivolous stuff. And I'm, giving, I'm not tricking them. I'm giving it to them before the build. You know what I mean? I'm giving them every opportunity to do the right thing. 
And if they don't, I'm still going to make them do the right thing. There's really no way they can get out of it. Well, how can they get out of it? I mean, the, and by the way, I do have what I consider to be a nuclear option. <laughs> like, you know, and I go through that invoicing part and I, you know, I don't, I can't, like I said in the beginning, I can't get them to approve everything. Certain things I got to let go of. You know, so I think we got to get rid of our pride where we think we have to hold the adjuster's feet to the fire because it's the right thing to do. We got to get rid of that thinking, man. You know, and, and also greed. I don't think, I don't feel like the guys here are coming from a place of greed. But too many people in our industry, they're greedy. You know, where my methods, dude, you know, I'm not perfect and I'm not going to be undefeated. But I, as I said, the higher winning percentage, the profits are absolutely ridiculous. They're disgusting. Disgusting. They're disgusting. They're like 65 and 70% in yeah. some certain you know, situations. It's disgusting. You know what I mean? Like, I need more profit? You know, for the, you know, I get these clients that like, the job started out at 20,000 and I get it up to 78, right? But I couldn't get them to, to see it my way on the OMP. I couldn't get the overhead and profit approved, right? And my client's pissed at me and wants to cry about the fact that I couldn't get the OMP. But I got him from $20,000 to 78, man. You know what I mean? And so that client is freaking fired. They're fired. I'm not dealing with them anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you too, man. That's what you should do, man. You're fired, you know? Yeah. Because I know they come at you with that nonsense, oh, too. Yeah. Like, oh, what about this right here? What about, are you kidding me? I just raised him from the dead. <laughs> I just raised the dead. For, for a while, I got, I got clients that were saying, oh, what are you doing holding up the claim? I said, let me give you a few books to read. <laughs> That's the the thing. I defend is the first one I have. Is a the very first one, yeah. <laughs> let me just teach it from the top down, you know. Let's back up a few inches. <laughs> There's a reason why you hired me. Yeah. You just don't know it. Yet. You don't know it. You don't know it. But I, so I started to mention the um, the nuclear option, if you will, because as I said. You're, after you built it, it's really not an estimate anymore. It's an invoice. It's incurred work. It's incurred services. Right, right. And not to say that, that I expect them to agree with everything and to pay everything, but it's not really up for debate anymore, right? Yeah, we went yeah. through the hypothetical stage. As long as it's accurate and there's no fluff, it, 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 there's no way around it. My man, I would just say that over like five more times. You know what I mean? Because like, see, that's just it right there. Yeah. If it's not fluff, if it is accurate, if you went through all the trouble of making sure it is accurate, then you can have the confidence to stand on knowing that they got to cover it. You know what I mean? So my point at that point, after you build it, it's an invoice, it's not an, not an estimate. I said that I have a nuclear option. I've gone through that process of the game of going back to them, add this one extra thing, add this one, get as much as I possibly can. But if I'm still at a point where this is wrong, like we're losing money on this or, or, or I'm not willing to just cut bait, you know what I mean? Then I do have another option, which is basically, look, you know, I'm, I'm sorry at this point, you know, I, I've been reasonable with you. I've had good faith. I've gotten out in front of this. I've been proactive. I've been transparent. I've given you all the details all the way throughout. You know, my job is to perform all repairs that are prescribed by you. I tried to do it your way. I told you I was going to try to do it your way. I couldn't do it your way. And I proved it with the photos and all of that. And, you know, I'm afraid at this point, you know, I, I have no other option but to cut off all communication with you. See, the thing is, is that my client or my contract is with the, was with the policyholder, not with you. And so it's really none of your business what we're discussing right now. <laughs> this is none of your business. I've only been including you in this process as a courtesy because I understand that you're the one that has to pay for it. But again, I've done everything proactively. I've done everything the right way. You know, I've, I've given you every opportunity to do the right thing here. And so at this point, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut off all communication. Please don't contact me anymore. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bill my client, and they're going to owe me for this, and they're going to have to pay it. And if they don't pay me, I'm afraid I'm going to have no other choice but to file a lien against my own client's property. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Don't even say goodbye. Just hang up the phone. That'll probably get it bought. <laughs> Not all the time, you know what I mean? But I've had plenty of times where they're like, hey, the supervisor said they're going to give you the overhead profit. And I can just envision why that is. I have to wonder. I don't know for sure. But I can just assume that, well, I had that, that I made that poker play, if you will, you know, with them. And then they're like, 
they don't really take me that seriously. But if it does become an issue, they better let the boss know. They better let their supervisor know that I just got off the phone with this idiot, this crazy contractor, you know, and I tried to explain to him, you know, and he was wrong and we're right. And I told him that he was wrong and we're right. But this moron said he's going to file a lien. I'm just letting you know, just in case it happens, because I, you know, it would be stupid if he did file a lien. He'd be in the wrong. But just letting you know. Okay. You know. What, what about uh, supervisory uh, costs? Su you, supervisor you, management stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I, so I put that on big jobs. You know, I, I put it on the bigger jobs, like more complex jobs, mm -hmm. even a, even a bigger residential job, like that big job that I showed you there, the, the yeah. second one. Yeah. I would put it on there, um, and they should pay it, yeah. right? And but it usually ends up at the end of the day as being a, like a negotiating tool where you get one or the other, overhead profit or the supervision. But big fires and stuff like that, they usually don't balk on that, right? They usually don't. Right. Um, There's an Xactimate white paper on it. Yeah, it's a good one too, with the, with the overhead and profit. Yeah, it's a good well, one. on the supervisory as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah, that, that it's not part, that of, it's not part of the overhead and profit. Insurance companies yeah. tell you supervisory is part of overhead and profit. Right, they get the two convoluted every single time, okay. and you got to bring it to that's You know, that's another reason why I think that uh, the camera idea would be a good one. With mitigation, for one, like you, Leo, like the mitigation part of it, like the hourly, how I spent this many hours, I had a supervisor, and they're like, no, you didn't. How, we're not going to give you that many hours. No, this is how many hours it took. Uh, but what if I had cameras proving it? Yeah, they try to calculate it based on, oh, if you had seven pieces of equipment, it's right. 20 minutes, but no, it's not true. Right, how about... how climb over people. And yeah. We were in uh, eye doctor's offices. Right, you weren't there. Still operational, you know, so those how, seven pieces of equipment... <laughs> To five hours. How about you see my brand new time lapse photos attached here too, and then? You <laughs> <laughs> How about that? You know what I mean? Like I haven't, I haven't got to try it yet. I'm so eager to do the photos you a, thing. A 360 camera? No, I think that would be killer too. The Matterport's great, but it's too expensive. I bought right, Samsung, right. a little baby Samsung for like 150 bucks on Amazon, and and. 360 was it? 360? 360 zooms in. Really? Like you're right there. Dude, 150 bucks? Every, I, I used to walk around like you did. Yeah, right. Now I just take one 360 on a tripod, and then I take my, my close-ups of, of the damaged locations like you did. Freaking awesome. It like saves it. so much. I bet it does. What are white papers? Yeah. Well, white paper is um, it, it's, it's basically like um, an explanation given out by the company who's providing the, the software. Mm -hmm. You could probably Google that and find it. Google yeah, well, Xactimate white paper. Well, it, it, actually, if you if you go to um, if, if you go to uh, uh, exactwhere .com, uh, and put in the search. Oh, uh, there you there you go. Good idea, right? Because right. it's on. It comes from their site. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could just search it on their site. You, you got a whole bunch of them. I mean, they it, got yeah. If you if you do it on yeah, Google. Is it pretty if you, much on any, any item that people have made questions on? Right. If you do it on Google and you see the search return come back, make sure it's on that exactware.com site because that's what he's talking about. It comes off of their own site, exactware.com. 509, any other questions, guys? I'm here. First grade question, what do you do when all... Oh, we don't take first grade questions, uh, I'm sorry. Second grade. <laughs> what you got, man? Uh, I had a uh, customer... There's no silly questions, state, so it's all good. They had an all-state claim that they just directly denied. Their neighbors got their roofs done from hail. Mm -hmm. They just directly denied it. What's the next step? Well, why did they deny it? Why did they deny it? I don't even think they came out on the roof. Yeah. I, well, he said, well, he had some inside damage, too, from rain. Mm -hmm. And they they didn't even, yeah, they was excluded or something. They well, they said it was excluded. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, and but I, I take it, and this is a question that I sometimes forget to ask, but I should ask in, in Abner. The roof had hail on it, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> I just want to make sure about that. Yeah, and I, I agree with that, but I'm just saying, like, right. just a quick thing about that. All the neighbors had their roofs replaced, so you should buy my roof. Like that, like it, it's accurate. I agree with the with the theory, but right. that argument never works. Like yeah, as far as getting yeah. it bought. So yeah, I mean, like, like, right? Yeah. But but I agree with you. you. You see it as common sense. Like right. everybody's got hail damage. Everybody got their house bought. So the first thing you need to think about is remember the adjuster is just a pawn. The field adjuster is just a pawn. That field adjuster was that came out initially has probably been sent home a week after 
the storm happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and don't ever call that same adjuster back for your supplement. Just let them go on their way. What you do is you call Allstate directly. It's like the main, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and I showed you how to do a photo report. Yeah. I would probably start with a photo report proving that there's hail all over the roof and send them that nice photo report to the inside. And just tell them, say, hey, we looked at this roof and it's plastered with hail damage. And we'd like to.